Hi guys, Jay Smith here, down at Barry Golf Range in Suffolk. Uh, today we've got a little bit of testing going on in the name of TaylorMade M2. Now, um, new for 2017, we've changed a few different things. Uh, okay, by the top, if you were to, oh, that's no different really, apart from the profile of the white being slightly slimmer. And you could say that this, uh, how the arches go, they're a little bit more angled back, but I mean, if you were just not to look at, you wouldn't know which one's which. Now the difference has come, underneath on the sole completely changed gone on the gold and in with the limey greeny yellow color um not quite sure what they're going on with the lime green this does sound like a little bit of a manufacturer that stopped using or making manufacturing golf clubs recently um they've got this thing called geoacoustic so what they're trying to do is they try and make it sound better because last year's model that there was a little bit of report saying it wasn't the nicest sounding club in the world. Um, so what they've done, they've just played around with these little strengthening bars on the back. They've tried to make it sound a lot nicer than before. It, the, it's got the old channel, speed pocket, arc. Uh, what else was other manufacturers called? Exact same thing. Uh, Taylor made got their own version of it. I mean, it's slightly bigger than it was last year, but it's just a case of mainly what they're trying to do. They're trying to move more weight this is the forgiving head remember the m2 um you see a lot of tour players etc they were playing a lot more of the m2s you, this year you'll start seeing a lot more going over to m1 because apparently taylor made that more well hopefully made that one a bit more forgiving with how they've moved the weighting um but this one no bells and whistles no movable tracks just the weight at the back to try and push cg even further further back and bottom and just trying to make MOI as large as they possibly can. Right, um, I'm going to go put on Tro Pro Tracer so you can see me bash these um, and then we'll hit some and do some numbers so I'm just going to go stick Pro Tracer on. Right, back again. Pro Tracer's on. Watching my every ball move. And um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit some of these now and see how they feel, see if it's changed from last year. Um, I've got this in the Fujikura uh, Pro Stiff Flex. I'd have liked to have got a X Flex, but that's all we had. Beggars can't be choosers. Um, but uh, one thing I do feel, and I, don't, I had the same thing with the M1. And if you haven't seen my M1 uh, review, it's on my channel, review, click on there, have a look. Same with the M1. I don't know if I know, I, I said it on the M1 or not, but it does seem very long. Now, I'm used to playing with a, a driver that's uh, slightly shorter anyway. My Ping G30 LS Tech, um, the shaft is shorter than standard uh, because I just cannot see the point of having all these massively long shafts. Now, there is no doubt these are standard length shafts. Yes, they are, but it just feels like scaffold pole and bucket on the end it just like feels massive but it shouldn't make any difference we should be able to hit these still um hopefully they've made with well, the geoacoustic made it sound a bit better than they did last year oh little pulley one that's scrapping onto the left edge of the fairway if not left rough necky one yep slightly necky about there wasn't a great hit at all you'll be able to see that by pro tracer um interestingly enough ball speed hasn't dropped too much which is interesting because considering the hit but this is supposed to be the forgiven one so i would expect a little bit more help shall we say let's hit another one oh that's fading off target a little bit too much fade that one not bad, I mean, that's fairway. That's definitely fairway. That's just, when I say it's fading off, it's fading off the target, started slightly left and then faded off. But I mean, that's target. I got to, right, the noise, definitely changed. Last year's was more of a boo, dead hit with all the carbon. I mean, this is carbon everywhere. I mean, I'd be surprised if there's actually any metal work in this whatsoever by the sound of, well, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, it feels nice. It, it does feel nice. Um, it's gone to the dead sound of last year, yes. Um, I'll hit another one. I just wanna see if I can bash one straight out the middle. 
Yeah, okay. As, as, as slightly left the target. I'm talking about probably five yards left. And nice strike. Feels nice. Again, like M1, uh, that spoiler alert, if you haven't watched my M1 review, it doesn't seem to be hopping off the face as most drivers do. I tell you, I'm gonna hit this. When I do the testing, I'll hit another one. I'm just gonna go hit one more before we get into real ball testing, etc. Little baby pull. That's left edge of fairway. Um, good hit, again. 149, see, yeah, again, I, with the spoiler alert, on the M1, when I hit range balls, these are range balls, remember, so they're not gonna go like a mile. Um, but I normally carry around about the 250, just over, uh, with a decent drive. I'm still getting, what, 240 there, 242. That was a good hit, and it's gone, 10 yards shorter with a range ball than I would like. Now, I don't know if that's, I've got a real ball here, although it's a very worn real ball, so I don't even know if it will go. It's gonna make a hell of a noise. But we'll see, we'll hit this one and see what happens to it. Oh yeah, okay, when I say it's a real ball, that was dead. I've seen better days, that ball. But, hit it in the middle. Um, yeah, it's a dead ball. Um, it's hard to say. I don't dislike the, the, the feel at all. Uh, it's a massive improvement over last year. Huge improvement over last year. Last year was dead. Um, uh, a lot of people, okay, a lot of people liked it. A lot of people didn't like it. So what they've tried to do this year, they've tried to make it sound a bit better and also perform exactly the same. Or, oh, sorry, slightly better. Although the, the tolerance difference between this one and the 2016 model is so tiny, um, you would never be able to really find out. One more before we do performance numbers. That's a pull. Yeah. Right. Well, the reason why some of these are going left is this is actually set one degree closed. The M2 this year is set one degree closed. Now, my Ping G30 LS is set one degree open. So this is two degrees closed compared to what I normally am used to. Now, you can't see that. The way Taylor made it said you can't see that when you look at it because of how they've moved the white profile on top around. Because your eye is drawn to the white on top not the face, which is actually one degree closed. Now, one degree may not sound a lot, but considering I'm like normally one degree open, that could be the reason why these are starting off further left than I'd like. Yeah, slightly left the target, but that's, when I say slightly left again, that's five, six yards left. Right, good club. Right, let's go hit some of Pro V1, my gaming ball, on GC2 get some real ball data and actually see how this one performs. Right guys, numbers time for the M2, TaylorMade M2. Hit with my Pro V1 gaming ball on GC2 and close data environment to see how this thing performs with real balls. Now, um, I'm a bit confused because uh, between the M1 and M2, I've just recently done the review on the M1. So if you, haven't seen that one, click on that one in the uh, channel. Watch that first, if you want to. Um, because this one here I've found surprisingly different to the M1. I'm finding the M2 a lot more user-friendly, should we call it user-friendly? Um, my strike pattern generally is pretty good. Um, I don't deviate from the middle too much. Yes, okay, I'll get the odd dodgy strike, everybody gets those but on the whole um i was getting better ball speed with the m2 with i did with the m1 um so just given on on a test just for the m2 alone i prefer the m2 uh it, it went i was getting bigger better ball speed but because of the spin model of the m2 um, I was getting way too much spin. That is where the M1 comes in because M1, you can drop the spin off by moving that track forward. Yes, it does become a lot less forgiving, but you've got that functionality with or adjustability 
with the M1. You haven't got that with the M2. So you can look at the spin model here and it's sort of two, what did I get up to? Uh, 2939 down to 2750, something like that. Yeah, two, uh, no, 2699. So 2799, 2930, it's like uh, 240 odd RPM. So it's not bad, There's, that's pretty good. The problem is it's too much. So I'm getting ball speed or average of 157, launching at 13.7, it's a fraction low, just a fraction low. Um, but I'm getting 2804 average spin, which is way too much. Uh, peaking height at 40.8, that's fine. But only carrying at 266 and it's because of the spin. If you can get that launch data and just drop that spin down, you'd instantly get a lot more carry. And that is where the M2, in my own belief, in my how I deliver, that's its fault. It's forgiving, it's not bad at all. If I look at the, tra like the trajectories, um, they're all fairly decent. Again, we're hitting driver, so it's the most inaccurate club in the bag, um, but they're all sort of fairly close to trying to grab some fairway. Um, quite a few of them definitely are, and then quite a few of them are definitely straight down the pipe, but it's a spin model. That bothers me. I quite like the feel of the M2. I did like the feel of the M2. Different to 2016 it is a slight different. Sounds a little bit more louder. It's a little more crisp than the dead noise of 2016. Um, but unfortunately, the numbers don't match for what I want. Um, if you could drop the spin down on it, um, but then it becomes an M1. So I would, I'd like the ball speed from the M2 on the M1 and then the ability to drop the spin of the M1 put on the M2, but I can't. So we have to go with the numbers we've got, um, but still not a bad club at all. Um, just doesn't quite give me uh, the distance numbers that I would like, but um, all in all, not a bad one. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, click the like button below. Comment below with whatever you'd like to see on the uh, channel and don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on my other social media. On Periscope, search Ask Golfnut, and on Twitter, search at Ask Golfnut. Thanks for watching.